morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about some strong cold fronts that are expected to impact Western Australia, some wet weather as well for the southern states of Victoria and Tasmania, some storms over New South Wales and some heavy rainfall up in Queensland. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather update. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. We're going to start things off over east though, just taking a look at the cold fronts and the wet weather that's moving through New South Wales, uh, South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. You can see it here a strong cold front lining up uh, along the coastline of South Australia, Victoria and stretching down towards Tasmania. You can see it better on the satellite imagery this morning. The cold front has moved through South Australia and now showers are contracted to the coastline and in its wake it is bringing some cold air which we'll touch on in just a few minutes but right now just looking at this weather system here it doesn't look overly strong but it is bringing some strong winds in its uh, wake. You can see winds down at low rocky point on Tasmania approaching gale force right now 54 kilometres an hour. Mount Syker Island not too strong down there as well, typically the wind windier spot in weather systems like this. But areas along the South Australian coastline as well, just outside of Robe, Curly Hills, 43 kilometres an hour, and some strong wind gusts as well have been reported throughout Victoria, and those winds will continue to be picking up today. So this cold front here, even though it looks like absolutely nothing, it is still bringing some weather, uh, some significant weather in its wake, and certainly is something worth talking about. You can see light to moderate rainfall extending across the western half of Victoria right now. That's expected to enter the Melbourne metro area in just a couple of hours, and some light to moderate rainfall also extending across the northern parts of Tasmania as well at this time. Again, really not much rainfall to be talking about. Only a couple of millimetres expected to fall in this cold front here. The bulk of the rainfall has already fallen for Tasmania. They've had a very good helping overnight. Some locations picking up over 30 millimetres in the past 24 hours. So some good rainfall out there. South Australia really hasn't received much rainfall either. And a similar story for Victoria, although a little bit more rainfall is expected to continue throughout the course of today as this weak cold front moves further towards Victoria's east. And it will be in its wake bringing some very cold air which is going to be bringing the snow level down to about a thousand meters across Victoria and New South Wales tonight and into tomorrow morning and that means heavy snowfall accumulations and possible blizzard conditions in the higher elevations are possible throughout the later hours of tonight and into early tomorrow morning. You can see snowfalls here expected to be around a couple of centimeters an hour uh, and sustaining themselves for the majority of the night so we could be waking up tomorrow to snowfall accumulations across the Australian Alps approaching five to six centimeters for some locations and maybe 10 centimetres around the higher th uh, ski resorts such as Threadbow or Perisher Valley. Some good snowfall accumulations are expected there. And you can see the snow also streaming into the uh, Victorian ranges as well. In fact, as far south as the uh, mountains just outside of Melbourne, again, for locations above sort of 1,000 to 1,100 metres, expect it to receive some snow tonight. But there is also the chance of some wet snow down to elevations of around 900 metres, especially for colder areas and areas in towards Tasmania as well. The snow line will be brought significantly far south. You can see this low pressure system getting quite strong in the Tasman Sea here. This really isn't something to be worrying about right now, considering it is a long way offshore but you can see some showers are still expected for the east coast of Tasmania and the eastern parts of Victoria's Gippsland region and also into New South Wales as well throughout the early parts of next week as this low pressure system streams further towards New Zealand. It's a very strong one indeed at this time but it is very far away from the uh, Australian mainland and that is as a result not providing any significant weather from that system but you might be able to notice this high pressure system here which we will get to in just a minute that is a very important factor in the forecast. Over the next three days we're looking at some some pretty decent rainfall accumulations here and there. There's a couple of good spots of rainfall on the Victorian coastline. A lot of that's going to be coming through in showers later today and into tonight. Up to 30 millimetres expected there. Um, and But once you get further north towards Geelong or Melbourne, the rainfall does drop off significantly. Still though, 15 millimetres is possible, but that's certainly on the upper level of what is expected there. Some good rainfall as well across the west coast of Tasmania. A further 20 millimetres is expected to fall. So again, we will keep an eye on that. And around Mallacoota on the Gippsland coastline of Victoria. Also some good rainfall expected there over the next three days, up to 30 millimetres of the stuff, but that'll mostly be Sunday towards Monday sort of rainfall there. As you can see over the 10-day accumulations, there is a little bit more on the forecast. We're going to be seeing a bit of a dry phase powered by that high pressure system, but later on in the forecast, I would just like to bring this up here. As we get into the first couple of days of August, next weekend, we're looking at a few cold fronts that are expected to move through, and this could be providing some rain and snow for the elevations, uh, for areas and higher elevations around Tasmania, Victoria. 
Victoria and into New South Wales as well, especially for Tasmania's west coast by the looks of things. But again, this is quite late on in the forecast, and I don't think the Eastern Reef knows exactly what it wants yet because it has said two completely different things uh, now since yesterday. So we will just wait and see on this weather system, but just a heads up for something like that. Now that is a very long-winded uh, set of coverage for this cold front situation across the southern states of Australia. We're now going to move things over and keep things winter related and talk about temperatures because they are going to be brutal over the coming couple of days for some locations. Expecting minimums to be up to 7 degrees Celsius below average. It isn't absurdly cold. Uh, we're not expecting absurdly cold like we have seen already, especially into the first week of July, but we're still expecting a big frost day and in fact a big frost week starting from Monday. So in the wake of these low pressure systems, as it moves into the uh, Tasman Sea, you can see it's bringing up some cold air from the southwest, and that's going to be dropping those temperatures across Victoria and New South Wales from around Sunday afternoon onwards. You can already see temperatures here expected to be, uh, and this is Sunday evening into early Sunday night. We're looking at temperatures very close to zero already across the higher elevations of uh, New South Wales, and temperatures only expected to continue falling throughout Sunday night and into early Monday morning. Monday, we're going to be waking up to temperatures approaching minus four, minus five degrees across the New South Wales highlands around Threadbow, but also down towards minus two or minus three as far north as areas such as Armidale and Glen Innes. Also very cold locations, but just look at this big swathe of light blue to white colouring. That means temperatures are going to be very close to freezing, if not at freezing. And you can see areas right through New South Wales, up into the southern parts of Queensland, even into South Australian locations in the Northern Territory. Temperatures are going to be down towards zero degrees Celsius on Monday morning. Very, very cold indeed. Uh, Victoria kind of escaped the worst of it, still expecting a couple of cold mornings around Ballarat, Bendigo, that sort of area, uh, but the coastal regions are slightly more mild as well. Sydney expecting to be pretty cold on Monday morning again, going to be hard to get out of bed for work, but still not as cold as the locations inland into Victoria, just warmed up slightly by the coast. And need I talk about Tasmania? I mean, look at this swathe of below zero temperatures covering about 80% of the island. It's going to be very cold indeed on Monday. And I'm saying this because this is bringing the chance of some pretty significant frosts. Monday morning and Tuesday morning when the ground Ground temperatures are very low indeed across Victoria and New South Wales, expecting a huge frost day uh, with these temperatures, and there could be some very dangerous frosts to crops and to livestock as well. For the farmers in this area, you need to be taking this forecast very seriously uh, because it is going to be exceptionally cold in these locations. One of the coldest mornings of the year. It's certainly going to be one of the coldest starts to a week for the year. Uh, so yeah, just make sure you are prepared for a pretty significant run of frosts on Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday as well. The locations most likely to be affected will be the ones adjacent to the Great Dividing Range through New South Wales in communities such as Griffith or Young or Dubbo out towards Orange and even as far north as Moree uh, around Glen in a sort of area, but also into Victoria as well, agricultural communities around Ballarat, Bendigo and that sort of area, and then across towards Albury uh, on the Victorian New South Wales border and even into the Gippsland region as well, picturesque farming locations, but certainly at risk of receiving some very significant frosts on Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday morning as temperatures absolutely plummet there. I mean, a huge swathe in the mountainous areas of well below zero, but even out here outside of Albury, which isn't completely mountainous, we're looking at minus two to minus three, and some of these temperatures here will threaten the coldest day of the year. Temperatures do warm a little bit for Victoria on uh, Wednesday. still going to be really cold, but continuing with the icy conditions through New South Wales as well, a big swathe of minus one to minus two, extending as far out as Cobar, still below zero temperatures, extending as far north as the New South Wales, Queensland, border so we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this forecast here i'll be giving you more details on the day of these weather events thursday a little bit of reprieve still really cold indeed to start off august friday things do finally start to warm up a little bit but still very cold indeed as a minimum temperature expecting to go cl close to zero but just not as cold as what monday tuesday and wednesday were this entire week is going to be really cold indeed so for farmers just make sure you are prepared for a pretty extreme run of frost considering those ground temperatures are going to have very little opportunity to recover. Daytime maxima as well, not expecting to be too high either with this high pressure system. So like I said, just make sure you are ready for those extremely low ground temperatures out in the agricultural regions of New South Wales and Victoria. Now we're going to break up this forecast right now with the winter weather and start talking about something tropical. Overnight we have had some pretty decent rainfall across the northern parts of New South Wales and into the southern parts of Queensland as the satellite imagery loads up here. In fact, some locations have picked up over 50 millimetres in the past 48 hours. Some very good rain 
rainfall out there. It'd be great if I could find a couple of uh, observations that do include the rainfall data on this map here to show you where the worst the rainfall has been. But just um, just looking at this rain swathe here between Lightning Ridge out towards Glen Innes and the mountains around it, we're looking at some pretty significant rainfall totals that have fallen. Now, Queensland as well has been covered by a huge swathe of cloud. In fact, the majority of the state is under the influence of some very significant clouding activity. And you can see it here on the satellite imagery. It looks really uh, quite nasty, the amount of cloud here. So very little sunshine is going to be touching the Queensland surface uh, today. But you can see the cloud really isn't producing much in the way of rainfall. There is a trough line that runs kind of through here. You can see the break in the clouds uh, where the trough line is running. It kind of runs from Mount Isa through to Longreach and then down towards, I think that's Roma there. Um, and then on the eastern side of it, uh, no, on the western side of it rather, or I guess the southern side of it from this angle, there is some very light rainfall. Again, nothing too extreme in terms of rainfall here. It's only going to amount to a couple of millimetres, but it will be that miserable, drizzly sort of stuff. And considering the winds as well, it's going to be dragging in some warm, humid hair as well. So it could be quite a warm, muggy day in this part of Queensland. Even as far north as far north Queensland as well, we're looking at some cloud activity there. And that's another part that I would like to talk about because they also have some rainfall on the cards as well. You can see accumulations over the next 10 days across Queensland. Absolutely nothing to be concerned about at all. Just a couple of millimetres uh, through central and southeastern Queensland. Uh, the rainfall swathe here is a little bit more aggressive, 40 millimetres of the stuff, but again, the majority of that has already fallen and uh, we're expecting not too much rainfall on top of what has already fallen. But then again, over the next 10 days, it looks like something later on in the forecast period uh, kind of blows through and provides a bunch of rainfall for this part of Queensland. So again, we will have to keep an eye on that, which I will touch on, on just now. You can see a little bit of rainfall sweeping in from a strong cold front expected to impact the southern states next Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, the 3rd, 4th, and 5th of August, respectively. That is a little bit of an interesting thing to be having on the forecast. That would be a very powerful cold front to do that. Again, I'm not 100% sold on that forecast right now, especially considering it's not reciprocated between the other forecast models. So we will keep an eye on it, but I don't think that that is something to be betting the house on certainly not right now. We're going to keep things in Queensland and just go up to far north Queensland and talk about the rainfall up there. They have had some healthy accumulations over the past 24 hours, some areas picking up over 20 millimetres of rainfall. And again, it's going to be this steady 20 to 30 millimetres a day over the next couple of days around Innisfail and Tully that do add up to the significant accumulations that could be 120 millimetres for the week. Again, it is completely normal for this part of Queensland to be receiving rainfall like that. But you can see here a pretty big swathe of rainfall right now streaming in in over Queensland from light showers and so forth. And it's these little showers here that get themselves backed up into the mountainous areas that do provide some pretty significant rainfall at times. Again, this is absolutely nothing to be talking about at all. And I'm not concerned about that. That's just more of a general weather forecast for today is a few showers around the Cairns area. But over the coming couple of days, you can still see these showers continuing to stream in here and they could at times be heavy. There is gonna be a little bit of a break sometime next week, Tuesday and Wednesday before the rainfall looks like it pipes up again Thursday Thursday and Friday, but again, nothing heavy here, nothing really to be writing home about. And you can see from 10 day accumulations, they have been dropped off on the forecast here. The heavy rainfall has been kicked out. We're only looking at around 50 millimeters of this part of far north Queensland. So really not much rainfall at all. But again, 50 millimeters in one or two mountain valleys, if that does fall in an hour or in two hours from a heavy band of showers that moves through sometime next week, you know what it can do up there. It can set those rivers off. Uh, but in far north Queensland, they are very much used to 50 millimeters falling in an hour. So it is and really something to be worrying about. And this isn't a forecast here that is cause for concern. It's now, Western Australia, that's the main topic of discussion right now. Some powerful cold fronts expected to move through sometime next week. We're getting a pretty nice day today, all things considered, over in Perth, which is fantastic to see. Just a few showers expected to materialise offshore later tonight. The rainfall starting for the Southwest Capes probably at around 11 pm to midnight for the um, Southwest Capes. That's Naturalist and Lewin. And a couple of storms also expected into early Sunday morning, too. The rainfall for the Perth metro area is going to start sometime tomorrow morning, but when is a very difficult question to answer because this rainfall is going to be moving forward very slowly. It is going to be hard to pinpoint an exact time for this rainfall to start, but if I was to put my money on something, I'd be saying for the southern suburbs such as Mandra or Rockingham, probably at around 3 or 4 a.m., but as you get up in towards the Perth metro area, probably closer to around 6 or 7 a.m., and the rainfall might not even start into the early afternoon hours. It looks like it's going to be majority uh, coastal sort of rainfall with just a couple of light showers here and there. And I don't think the northern suburbs are going to get any measurable rainfall until probably around uh, midday or 1pm even. 
the rainfall does really pipe up for the southwest capes uh, by around late morning, early afternoon sort of hours. And you can see showers and storms extending across a lot of the southwest as far north as Mandurah throughout uh, the afternoon hours of Sunday, uh, which is tomorrow. And then you can see the cold front itself actually making its run for Perth Sunday night, tomorrow night, uh, with some heavy rainfall and possibly some damaging storms in it as well. I did say yesterday that the forecast did support some severe thunderstorm development, just considering how much energy was going to be available for thunderstorms because of the and current and how warm the waters are offshore from Perth still but I'm going to retract that comment right now I don't think that it's going to happen just considering the downtrend in the forecast severity of this cold front here I don't think this one's going to be anything interesting definitely not for the northern suburbs of Perth maybe 15 millimeters of rain some the odd gusty shower and so forth and maybe the odd bolt of lightning the southern suburbs might get a little bit more there is still the chance of some thunderstorms and maybe even the odd very heavy shower that moves through and dumps 10 millimeters in a couple of minutes but I'm going to retract track that comment of potential severe weather from this cold front. I don't think it's going to be happening. You can see the rainfall as well extending as far north as Geraldton and Durian Bay by late Sunday night into early Monday morning. Uh, the rainfall does die off before it gets up in towards the Murchison and the Gascoyne region, but still penetrating far enough out into the wheat belt as far out of Southern Cross that it could be providing up to 10 millimetres for locations out there as well, which is fantastic to see for farmers. They would love to see that. A secondary cold front coming through late Monday afternoon for the Southwest Capes as well. That's going to be bringing some more showers to there. But again, the Perth metro area is sort of missing out. It looks like a bit of a moisture band streaming in a re as well around Geraldton and Northampton. So we could be seeing some heavy rainfall sometime Monday night into early Tuesday morning for those locations, potentially up to 50 millimetres of the stuff as well. We know how much rainfall totals can blow out, especially we've seen it this year time and time again from a weather system like this. So again, we will keep a very close eye out on the forecast here. Some heavy rainfall as well is possible later on next week. It looks like we're going to get a little bit of reprieve to the rainfall around it. Tuesday night could be a little bit clearer, but those northwesterly winds are going to give it away that a strong cold front is on the forecast. And after potentially 25 millimetres on Sunday and Monday, another 25 millimetres is inbound for the southwest of Western Australia on Wednesday afternoon. You can see this uh, cold front here, very strong indeed, providing a lot of rainfall to the southwest. And I do reckon from around sort of uh, early Wednesday morning into around late Wednesday morning, 10 or 11 a.m. most likely, the rainfall will really pipe up for the Perth metro area and we will be seeing some heavy rainfall at times some storms and some damaging winds as well and you can see wind gusts here for the Perth metro area and the southwest as a whole peaking at around 75 to 80 kilometers an hour very strong indeed certainly some significant wind gusts and some heavy rainfall accompanying it certainly something to be watching out for on the forecast here uh, the rainfall does ease off a little bit Wednesday afternoon but still showers continuing through Thursday and even in towards Friday as well before finally easing off and being replaced by a high pressure system and it looks like a couple of days of dry weather are possible before another cold front takes the rains sometime early August, but still very interesting weather indeed. It's rainfall on Sunday, Monday, a little bit of a break on Tuesday afternoon, then it returns on Wednesday, heavy again for Wednesday and Thursday morning and slowly easing off by Friday. And then a couple of days of dry weather, but unfortunately under the influence of this high pressure system, that means temperatures are going to be freezing. And you can see it here on the forecast map, uh, temperatures expected to go very close to zero on Saturday morning. And then on Sunday morning, again, they could actually reach zero for some locations across the southwest of Western Australia. And this is the August frost that those farmers absolutely do not want to see on the forecast. So we're going to have to wait and see what actually happens with these weather systems here, because this looks like it might be an ugly forecast for farmers, especially in the deep southwest of Western Australia. Now, accumulations over the next 10 days are actually quite high. We'll just break it down bit by bit. Over the next three days, which is the rainfall coming through on Sunday, you can see accumulations up towards 30 to 40 millimetres across the southwest. Perth itself expecting a hit and miss 20 to 30 millimetres of rainfall and negligible rainfall out in the weed belt as well. It really doesn't penetrate inland. A couple of good drops expected as far north as Geraldton and Northampton, up to 50 millimetres up there. Five-day accumulation, which includes Tuesday and Wednesday coming through. You can see a lot more rainfall is expected here. Uh, throughout Wednesday, we're probably looking at up towards 30 millimetres for parts of the southwest and some good rainfall offshore as well. Very decent indeed and looks absolutely fantastic on the forecast. And then 10-day accumulations, not too much of an increase, but in terms of 10-day rainfall across the Perth metro area, at further 10 millimetres added to the 50 that we've already seen. I'll be looking at up towards 60 to 65 millimetres of the Perth metro area. Southern suburbs receiving a little bit more areas down towards Mandra up towards 80. Bunbury also expecting up towards 80 to 85. Margaret River expecting a healthy 100 millimetres. Albany expecting a little bit less around 35 millimetres or so. And some decent rainfall as well penetrating out into the wheat belt. Not as much as what was on yesterday's forecast but still some decent rainfall out there potentially up towards 20 to 25 millimetres for locations towards the 
uh, west of Albany Highway and between 10 and 15 millimetres for locations towards the east of Albany Highway as well and some good rainfall in the northern parts of the Weed Belt too to really top things off. And that basically does it for the forecast here. If I have left anything unanswered, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, a very long forecast update, so thank you to watching to this point. Your support is greatly appreciated. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and I could not run this show without them. So thank you so much to all of the names on the screen right now. And that is all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.